Yeah. Welcome to the Diamond District, Chocolate City, USA, Washington, D.C., ladies and gentlemen. My name is Head Rockin'. I'm a district resident. Here to spread love to you and yours. Yeah, yeah, I want to give a little bit of my heart to you. You feel me? Right, D.C. is a plantation. Please believe it, right? It's not a state. It's ruled by a white Congress. I mean, that's flat out. Majority black town, white, majority white Congress, <laughs> making the final decisions. My name is Vance Levy, a.k.a. Head Rock, and my relationship to D.C. is, uh, I'm the mayor of D.C. hip-hop. That's what they say. Who says that? They. <laughs> I'd say that there's one moment that made me famous. My first time in the 930 Club that I remember down on F Street, not 930 F Street, was uh, actually as the guest of The Roots. And I, I freestyled on their show, and, and I remember the next day at my job, somebody rolled up on me in the car and said, man, I just saw you at the 930 Club last night. You were fucking killing it. Which was real cool, because my coworkers was like, what the fuck is he talking about, you know? And I got the smile, and you see the little thing you know, come off on my teeth and shit. Are y'all ready for the show? Back in the day, it was, it was, Lord have mercy. I haven't thought about those days in a very long time. The nurturing days where we all were friends and not even really judgmental of one another, skill level, pushing each other. On 14th Street, you know, I, I've been in alleys on 14th Street, um, in, in ciphers, we call them in hip hop ciphers, where you have a group of folks um, in a group and, and maybe somebody's beatboxing and, and MCs get up and start rhyming with freestyling, um, you know, showing our, our skills off to our, our peers. Um, almost like a playful thing. It's entertainment, it's, it's non structured entertainment. It was a place where artists could come and work on their craft. And in, in those spaces is where friendships were made. Um, and like I said, these, these, these businesses, there were businesses in these blighted areas that were welcoming you know, of artists, mostly bars. And so we, we'd congregate in there and free and organic entertainment. And so, so those type of situations would, would spill out onto the street. Sometimes the crowd was bigger outside the venue than it was inside the venue, you know, especially if they charging. So not everybody going into a bar or a cafe is spending money. They going to see the, they going, that's deep. They actually going to see the art, be a part of the art scene, you know. Um, and that, that, that wasn't the scene for a lot of people. If you clean cut, clean as a whistle, and you have pop aspirations, you're not going down there into those so-called CD places, but that's where we were. And those places were welcoming of us. Um, and, we, and we got to see each other. We didn't cast judgment on one another's lifestyles. Um, so I think that's... I, I, so I, maybe as I talk about it, maybe that's what the draw was, you know, and, and to some degree to, to be in, an, in, an, in a culture, an underground culture, a non-mainstream culture, the one thing that we had in common is that, you know, we're probably all to some degree black sheep figures in our families. There's some estrangement in some kind of way from the traditions of our family and we found family amongst one another down there. So that contributed to the... Um, to the to the nurturing of of our universal, I should say, I guess, um, DC independent art scene.